ओम ज्ञानतिमीराजनशलाकया चक्षुन्मील येना तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नमा ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदातस्वामीनामि नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चातिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर इन दिस सेशन वी कंटिन्यू टू डिस्कस the same words which we discussed in the previous session the 24th verse of the 17th chapter of the first canto of shrimad bhagavatam this is part 2 of discussion of the same words the verse i will just uh, read uh, recite again the 24th verse tapa shaucham daya satyam iti pada krite krutaha अधर्म अंशो भग्ना स्मय संग मदस्तव द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस वर्ड्स द ट्वेंटी फोर्थ वर्ड्स इन द एज ऑफ सत्य इन द सत्य युग और एज ऑफ ट्रुथफुलनेस योर फोर लेग्स वर इस्टैब्लिश्ड बाय द फोर प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ ऑस्टेरिटी क्लिनीनेस मर्सी एंड ट्रुथफुलनेस बट इट अपीयर्स दैट थ्री ऑफ योर लेग्स आर ब्रोकन due to rampant irreligion in the form of pride lust for women and intoxication so in the purport which we discussed in the previous session part 1 of this uh, presentation of this same verse it is explained that the influence of maya is proportionate to the extent to which i become captivated by maya's allurement for enjoying sinfully understand this very carefully maya is alluring come enjoy sinfully and if i think oh let me enjoy because i am seeking happiness let me enjoy even if it is in a sinful way let me enjoy then i become a uh, prey to the uh, influence of maya hmm. so the uh, scriptures of warning don't be captivated by maya's allurement now somebody may say why should krishna arrange maya to allure us in the first place that is because we have desire for enjoying in that sinful way we have developed the desire why are we here in the material world because of our desire to enjoy materially materially means sinfully materially means sinful so if we have desire for enjoyment then only we will become captivated by maya's allurement to give a very simple example if let us say you are a complete teetotaler you don't you completely abstain from drinking any liquor you don't take any liquor you are strict Uh, in never touching even liquor now you are walking on in the market on the street when there are so many shops now when you pass by a liquor store either you don't even pay attention or in if you see it oh liquor store okay i have nothing to do with it you just go by pass by you have nothing to do with liquor store but somebody who is addicted to drinking liquor or liquor store moment he sees or gets the smell or gets some idea of a liquor store 
immediately so much attraction to enter the liquor store to find out what is new to buy something or to taste something or to consider enjoying some drink etc etc so like that the same uh, uh, principle that works in this material world is if i have a desire in my heart i want to enjoy sex pleasure if i have a desire and that too i am having a desire to enjoy in sinful ways because krishna says in bhagavad gita dharma aviruddha kamosmi bharatarsham dharma aviruddha bhuteshu kamosmi bharatarsham krishna says i am sex life which is in accordance with religious principles sex life is a place in this material world to bring forth krishna conscious progeny hmm? to bring forth devotees so sex life is required but if that sex life is indulged in simply for the sake of sex enjoyment and don't want to take any uh, steps for uh, following the religious principles in engaging in uh, sex without following the religious principles simply because some people they want to enjoy sex life sinfully then maya captures such people and then maya punishes them sinful activity means the sinful reaction the laws are very very stringent nobody can avoid so there is suffering there is punishment for sinful activities and they are allured by maya because they have deep rooted desire for sinful enjoyment so the vedas are warning us do not go to darkness of ignorance tamasima jyotirgama but go to the progressive path of light hmm? uh, maya is compared to darkness maya hoya andhkar krishna surya sama krishna or the spiritual path is compared to light and if we can come out of darkness by coming into light of krishna consciousness then we are completely safe we are saved from the illusion and no more illusion can bewilder us no more illusion will allure us no more illusion will be even present illusion will disappear hmm? it's like darkness uh, can disappear as soon as there is light hmm? so continuing to uh, read the purport from where i stopped in the previous session propad was describing that in this age of kali uh, there is so much of uh, corruption bribery nepotism now what is the root cause of all these evils in kali yuga nobody likes them but what is the root cause of all these evils so prabhupad says in this purport that these evils are having a root cause that is uh, the uh, people in kali yuga not following the principles of austerity cleanliness mercy and truthfulness the modern civilization and economic development in this present age hmm? they are creating uh, so much of uh, imbalance in the life of uh, people so much of uh, imbalance imbalance that means no balance between material 
and spiritual activities. No balance. Practically no spiritual activities. Or even if somebody is practicing some spiritual life, it is simply uh, very, very meager or it is simply for the sake of these uh, material benefits. So Bhagavatam declares spiritual practices meant for material gain is actually a cheating religious system. Dharma projita kaitava atra. Bhagavatam rejects all such materially motivated religious systems. That means going and praying to a devata or Krishna, simply I want money for material enjoyment. This is Kaitava Dharma, this cheating religion. Krishna never sanctions as the Supreme Personality of Godhead money for material enjoyment. Krishna never sanctions. And the Devatas, they simply are bound by the laws of nature to award according to certain rules, certain regulations. So they cannot consider or they do not consider or they cannot consider the merit of the person who is praying for certain benefit. They cannot consider the devatas. So if somebody is approaching a devata according to the Vedic descriptions for getting some wealth, then they will get the wealth if they follow all the rules and regulations. Now, after getting the wealth, how they utilize the wealth, the devata cannot uh, actually regulate. Devata cannot regulate. So it's up to the person who's got wealth or who's got power or who's got some knowledge or who's got some, uh, some, uh, some uh, resource, how to utilize that resource? Now, the resource can be utilized in a religious way or an irreligious way. Now, Kali Yuga, the influence of Kali is such that the sinful desires are too many and there are too many opportunities for fulfilling the sinful desires in sinful ways because the people are sinfully inclined to enjoy materially. So, Srila Prabhupada says, if the leaders and rich men of the society spend 50% of their accumulated wealth mercifully for the misled mass of people and educate them in God consciousness, the knowledge of Bhagavatam, certainly the age of Kali will be defeated in its attempt to entrap the conditioned souls. There is a solution. The rich people, the powerful people should spend 50% of their wealth for educating the common people in Krishna consciousness. Simply through disseminating this Bhagavatam, knowledge given the Bhagavatam, the attractive pastimes of Krishna and his pure devotees, making people hear that. Making people hear Sankirtana, chant Hare Krishna, nice music, nice japa, and distributing prasadam, uh, then people's uh, mind will become cleansed of the uh, dirt accumulated due to the influence of Kali. And then Maya will be defeated, Kali will be defeated, and Maya will be defeated. And also Prabhupada says here, false pride or too high an estimation of one's own values of life, undue attachment to women or association with them simply for the sake of sex pleasure and intoxication, addiction to intoxication will divert human civilization from the path of peace. However much people may clamor for peace in the world. People want peace, but simply if you simply desire peace and have big peace conferences and peace talks and peace uh, propagation of uh, peaceful way of living. That's not going to work as long as people's heart is contaminated by desire for sex enjoyment, 
sinful activities you cannot have peace in the society at all the preaching of bhagavatam principles will automatically cleanse away the dirt in the heart of the people and make people austere clean both inside outside merciful to the suffering and truthful in daily behavior these four principles or pillars of religion are automatically established by preaching the bhagavatam principles this is the way of correcting the flaws in the human society this is what prabhupada is uh, teaching us in this purport i'll stop here thank you very much hari krishna